David, the many worlds interpretation of quantum theory arguably is one of the most remarkable and astonishing claims anywhere in science. You've been one of the pioneers of this, so please tell me what it is and how can you believe such an extravagant claim? Well, what it is first, uh, it is the idea that um, the physical world that we see around us, the, the, the room, the stars, galaxies, and so on, is just one tiny sliver of the whole of reality. And the whole of reality includes many such objects, many of the kinds of objects that we have traditionally thought of as the universe. And so it's sometimes called the many universes theory. I actually prefer a different, I prefer to call it the multiverse theory because it contains a lot more than just those things that we used to call universes. It contains other structure as well. So the whole thing as a whole, reality as a whole, is the multiverse. Now, how can you believe such a thing? The reason we have to believe <laughs> this, if we believe anything due to science, is, well, really there are two, strand, there are two um, paths uh, that force us to uh, believe that there, are, that there is a multiverse. One of them is simply to ask of quantum theory, which is the deepest theory that we have as physicists, in terms of which other theories in, in physics are expressed, um, we ask, what does this theory say about reality? And it, uh, it turns out that in the equations of uh, quantum mechanics to express um, the, the, what happens in a process in the laboratory, you have to write out many paths mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. apparatus, many different histories of it. And if, if this is applied to different histories of the laboratory as a whole, of the, of the experimenters, of the, the world, and so on, then that is the parallel universe's interpretation. That's, historically, that is why people first believed in parallel universes. I actually prefer a more concrete uh, argument which is that if you start with the experiments, if you start mm. with a simple thing like the two-slit experiment where you pass a single photon through two different slits, that's already giving you a hint of the <laughs> parallel universe's <laughs> kind of idea, uh, that if you take seriously what happens in that experiment, the outcome can only be explained, ca cannot be explained by um, the idea that the photon passed through only one of the slits or took any one path. Any one path would give a wrong answer. And the different paths um, affect each other. Again, if different paths affect each other, that means that different histories affect each other, and so you can build the argument up into many universes. So first of all, I want to get a clarification. You use the term multiverse. Most scientists today, particularly cosmologists, astronomers, use the term multiverse in terms of generating multiple universes of the kind we know today through processes that involve a uh, uh, part of, in, of, of cosmology like inflation theory that shows so how the Big Bang occurred and how the universe expanded and branching off of other universes. And there are different other kinds. The multiverse you're talking about is radically different. Yes, the cosmological multiverse theory is about universes that do not interact with each other. Yes. Their only reason, the only reason that cosmologists believe they exist is that they want to explain uh, why odd, um, why uh, unusual configurations of matter exist in our universe. They want to say that in most universes they don't. So that, that is, um, that's the cosmological kind of multiverse universes that don't interact with each other. And you're, that's not part of your thinking. That's not. You're, you're agnostic on that, perhaps. Yes, I'm, I, 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 I don't know whether that's true or not. What I do know is that there's a lot less evidence for the existence of those than for the quantum multiverse, which paradoxically have less support among <laughs> uh, physicists than the cosmological kind. Now, in your multiverse, the, the different universes, if we call them that, actually do interact, which is how you generate it in the first place. Yes, they are in constant intimate interaction. And although the um, experiments that can only be explained in terms of multiverse are very hard to arrange and they require very subtle laboratory techniques, in fact, we know from the theory 
that practically all of our everyday experience is conditioned by multi-universe interactions. For example, matter couldn't be solid if each atom only took one path. It, what keeps it solid is the um, interactions between different instances of the same atom in different universes. That is what makes for rigidity. It's also for what makes permanent magnets. It's also the reason that we can have um, amplification of signals. It's the reason that we can see stars. Now, clearly, that is not a common accepted view. That is, well, I think all physicists who look at these phenomena would agree that quantum theory is needed to explain those phenomena. Yes, that's but right. But they would not express quantum theory in terms of parallel universes. It, it, for example, the, the, the solidity of matter could be explained by the exclusion principle because uh, things just can't occupy the same spot. And so, yes. so they, it, it, it seems, it seems uh, rigid when, in fact, it's mostly space. Yes, so that's a good example. So if we take the exclusion principle and express it in its true quantum uh, uh, okay. theoretic terms, it says that a sum of certain terms of a vast number, exponentially vast number of terms, has to equal some other exponentially vast <laughs> number of terms. And that is saying that uh, each one of these things, if it represents reality, represents a different history of the atoms, and they are affecting each other. When you're saying a different history, some people talk in quantum mechanics as though these are possible histories, but they don't have a basis in reality. You are claiming that they have a basis in reality? Yes. I mean, this is a dumb question, but how many are there? Um, there, there are um, vast numbers no, of them. No, it's not good if, enough vast. Uh, I, want, I want a number. So, for example, if, we, if we're talking about the number of different histories that's happening in, let's say, uh, a cubic meter of air then we're talking in terms of 10 to the power of 10 to the 23 different histories are all happening at the same time. So that's 10 to the power of... Of, uh, uh, um, of number one with 23, 23 zeros. zeros and, and that billion, 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 something like that. Yes. Uh, and so that's the number of different histories of this one meter of air. And of course, we have a gigantic universe, yes. so one would take it to unbelievable pattern. Now, those histories, when do they occur? The, 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 that's from the beginning of time or right now? I mean, is yes. this sequentially um, or in parallel? Um, one has to uh, understand it in, in this way. Well, first of all, yes, they have existed since the Big Bang. They, 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 there was an older version of the quantum multiverse in which they only appeared uh, Branching. as branches, but that has now been abandoned. And in fact, we now think of it in terms of uh, happening for all time. But... Um, remember that the, there's a lot more in the multiverse than just universes. And in fact, universes are an emergent property of the multiverse. So uh, some types of phenomena, like uh, human thought and the outcomes of scientific experiments, are uh, expressible in terms of um, universes. But a lot of other phenomena, such as quantum computers or the interior um, of molecules are not. And for those, it's the multiverse rather than individual universes.